Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with the protagonist Nick, driving wounded to an unknown destination. He is struggling to breathe and is covered in blood. A police car passes by, signaling him to pull over. Nick slams his car against the curb, and falls unconscious. The officer takes one look at him, and notices a gunshot wound on his shoulder. The scene shifts to a couple of weeks ago, when Nick is in the hospital with his sick daughter. She has now lost hope of survival, and asks her father to leave. She takes it out on him, because her mother has passed away from an illness. Nick apologizes that things turned out this way with her mother, but promises to fight to the end for her. Saddened, he leaves the room, and the nurse gives him the bill to pay for his daughter's treatments. His difficult financial situation doesn't allow him to pay everything now, but he promises to do so soon. He works as an Uber driver, but this is not enough to pay off his debts, so he needs to find another solution. Later, he visits a friend, Veronica, who runs a gym. They go to her office, where they discuss a robbery. He tells her that he needs a reliable team, and she promises to help him. As he prepares to leave, she pulls out a watch he gave her many years ago. He is tempted to take it, as he could sell it for a handsome sum, but decides to leave it, saying it is a gift. Soon after, a man named Jack enters Veronica's office to pay her a visit. Apparently, she owes him $100,000, but evidently she cannot pay off her debts. So she proposes that he join the robbery, and take a loot far greater than $100,000. That day, Nick reflects on the robbery as a friend calls to ask where his money is. Nick is in debt up to his neck, and by now, the robbery is his last hope. Later in the evening, he shows the plan to the rest of the team. Nick says that the bank manager will be absent for 20 minutes, so that is the time they have to rob the bank. He then says that Ryan, the assistant manager will help them open the safes, but they have to pretend to beat him up, so it looks like he is not involved in the robbery. Nick points out that safe number 23 is only for Jack, the rest of the team can rob the other ones. He warns them not to touch anyone, because then the police will shoot. Jerry and his two friends come out and have doubts about the robbery, as they do not know what their share of the loot is. Veronica asks if they can trust their hacker, Xander, and Nick states that his father helped him in prison, and he promised to help his son. On the day of the robbery, everyone anxiously awaits the bank manager's exit. As soon as Xander disables the security cameras, the team springs into action. While Jack and the others go to get keys for the safes, Nick destroys the security camera recordings. The team starts filling bags with money and jewelry. Spotting that the police are already on their way to the bank, they have four minutes left. At this point, the team prepares to leave, but a thief in a white mask, Jerry, stays behind. He grabs the assistant manager, who is involved in the robbery, and takes him to an office, where he shoots him in the head. Afterwards, he escapes just before the police arrive, and gets into the van. The team leaves, and the people inside the bank stand up. The special forces enter the bank and find nothing suspicious, believing it was a false alarm. In the van, everyone cheers happily after successfully robbing the bank. Then Nick opens suitcase number 23, and hands Jack an external hard drive on which there is $500,000. Jack passes everyone $10,000, and promises that in a couple of days everyone will get their share. Later, they arrive at a deserted area, where everyone changes clothes, and drives away in their cars. But when Nick checks his car, he realizes that it has a flat tire, and at that moment, Jerry shoots him in the shoulder. Nick manages to escape, and Jerry grabs his suitcase and leaves with the two friends. The next morning, Nick wakes up to get into his car, and the scene shifts to the moment when he lost consciousness. He wakes up in the hospital, and tells the officers that someone shot him while he was checking his car, but he doesn't mention the robbery. Back to Jack and Veronica, they are enjoying life in a beautiful mansion. Jack receives a phone call from Jerry, and we learn that the two had been planning to kill Nick all along. But they don't yet know that he survived. Jack promises Jerry $50,000 for eliminating Nick, but he says that is not enough. Jerry also wants to receive Nick's share of the proceeds. The fact is that Jerry has the case with hard disks, so Jack still needs him. While at the hospital, Nick grabs some clean clothes and tries to escape. One of the thieves, Willis, enters the hospital, and asks to see Nick's daughter, but because he is not a relative, he is not allowed to see her. Soon, Nick goes to visit his daughter, and finds the flowers that Willis left for her. Nick kisses her and promises to return soon. He then leaves the hospital, and Xander arrives to pick him up in his car. Apparently, he has been the only loyal person from the beginning, and is determined to help him get his share of the loot back. Nick asks him to drop him off somewhere, and then return to keep an eye on his daughter. The investigators discover, 
that Xander has replaced the security camera recordings with fake recordings. Nevertheless, they are able to see part of the license plate, and try to identify the van. Meanwhile, Nick finds the location of one of the thieves, Willis, and enters his car. When Willis gets inside, Nick attacks him with a stun gun. Nick asks him where his share of the loot is, but Willis only knows that Jack and Veronica are enjoying life somewhere. Nick then shoves the gift Willis brought his daughter into his mouth, and tells him to stay away from her. Nick accidentally kills him, and then leaves immediately. That evening, he visits an old friend, Byrne, a doctor who helps him treat his arm. Byrne is a competent doctor, but unfortunately, he has lost his license and can no longer work. In the meantime, investigators make progress, and have found the thief's black vehicle. The vehicle was robbed, but they found no fingerprints inside. In addition, the owner of suitcase number 23 sued the bank, as the item was insured. Nick visits a law firm, and reveals that he has information about the stolen briefcase of one of their clients. He meets with the lawyer named Cameron, who initially refuses to reveal his client's identity, but then gives him a number to call, and advises him to be careful. In the process, investigators arrive at the law firm's building, and Nick goes into hiding. The investigators talk to Cameron, and discover that thieves have stolen $2 million in cryptocurrency. Nick calls the number given by Cameron, and is directed to a lamp store. Soon, the investigators learn that he has escaped from the hospital, and realize that something is wrong, because a normal person would not do this. Nick asks to speak with the owner of the suitcase, Valeni, but his men prevent him from doing so. He claims to know who stole his suitcase, and at that moment, Valeni enters the store. Nick reveals that he is one of the thieves, and promises to return the suitcase to him. In this way, Valeni will receive both, the insurance money and the briefcase. Nick asks in return for his share of the loot, that is $500,000, to pay for his daughter's surgery. Valeni accepts and lets him go. Meanwhile, investigators continue to work on the case, and gather information on all the robberies over the past six months in the state of Nevada. Back to Jack, who learns of Willis's death from his friend. Jack tells him to steal the suitcase from Jerry and Hyde, as he will be the prime suspect. Jack and Veronica don't suspect Nick, thinking that Willis was killed by his own friends, so they take his side. Nick is in the car with Valenti's driver, and calls Xander to ask how his daughter is doing. He then goes to visit her in the hospital, where Veronica also arrives. His daughter is taken away for some tests. Veronica swears that she did not know Jack wanted to kill him. When Nick asks her where the briefcase is, she writes down the address and leaves. The investigators learn of Willis's death, and through him, they also identify Jerry. In addition, they discover that he has a girlfriend named Monique, and decide to visit her. Meanwhile, Nick arrives at the address given by Veronica, which is indeed Jerry's house. They go inside through the back door, but find Jerry's mother inside. Nick and the henchman look for the briefcase, but at one point, Jerry's friend arrives, and when he sees Nick, he starts to run away. Soon, he is caught, and Nick starts beating him. Nick tells him that they have to take him to a place to ask him questions. Meanwhile, the investigators visit Monique, and discover that Jerry was here a few days ago. In addition, she reveals that Jerry's friend sometimes sleeps at his mother's house. Back to Nick, he ties the thief to a chair and begins to torture him. Nick knows that he must meet with Jack to give him the briefcase, and asks him for the address. Initially, the thief refuses to talk, but then the henchman begins his work. Nevertheless, the thief continues to say he does not know. So the henchman decides to get more severe, with electricity. The thief screams, and finally reveals where he is to meet Jack tomorrow night. Veronica returns home and is furious with Jack, because he tried to kill Nick. As it turns out, she indeed was not involved in Nick's betrayal. Jack begins to beat her up, because he is jealous of Nick, and promises that he will soon kill him. In the meantime, the investigators enter Jerry's house, and when they spot him, they start shooting him. Jerry runs away, and the detectives call for reinforcements. Jack is grabbing a bag of money when he receives a phone call from Jerry, who is waiting for him with the briefcase. Soon, a black car arrives, picks up Jerry, and drives away. The police investigate Jerry's house, and discover several phone numbers and other clues. Jerry arrives at the meeting point with the briefcase in hand, and spots Jack arriving in the car. He pulls out a gun and slowly approaches. And the police locate Jerry's phone, and drive to the meeting point. Jack and Veronica enter the building where he is to meet Jerry, and discover the dead body of his friend. Jerry believes it was Jack who killed him, and a gunfight breaks out. Jerry raises his gun, and slowly approaches, but Jack shoots him, killing him. 
Then Nick also appears, and shoots Jack in the stomach. In anger, Jack shoots Veronica, and Nick quickly shoots him again. Finally, Valenti's henchman arrives, and takes the briefcase. He gives Nick a bag with $500,000 and leaves. Nick hugs Veronica and leaves with Xander, before the police arrive. Valenti receives the $2 million from the insurance company, and sells the cryptocurrencies to a client. Finally, we see Nick and his daughter happily going on vacation. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.